Hello, welcome to Musashi Japan's knife selection video. Sharpening your knives. There's a lot to go through here. There's different styles of knives with single bevels and double bevels, different stones to use. There's, there's so much information out there. I'm gonna try and narrow it down, give you the most specific, basic tips I can. First, let's talk about your stones. There's three types of sharpening stones out there. There's oil stones, then there's two types of water stones. Don't use an oil stone for any kitchen knife. The oil creates too much heat and you'll ruin the temper of the edge of your blade and it won't stay sharp for very long. Water stones are the best way to sharpen any knife, be it Japanese, Western, anything. With water stones, there's two types. There's soaking stones and there's splash stones. Soaking stones, you have to submerge in water for about 30 minutes until you stop seeing the little air bubbles coming out. Then the stone is nice and homogenous and you can go ahead and sharpen your knife. The stones that we have are called splash and go stones. You literally just splash some water on the surface and away you go. Now what kind of stone should you use? There's different grits, what do all these numbers mean? Basically, the lower the number is, the more aggregate per square centimeter. So a really low number is a very rough stone. It's gonna remove a lot of metal very quickly. The higher the number is, the more it's actually a polishing stone. And instead of changing the angle of your knife, you're more just polishing the surface of the cutting edge. To sharpen a knife, normally you wanna start on a nice low number. This stone here is actually a dual purpose stone. The one side is a thousand grit, which is really good for reshaping your knife, but it's not too aggressive where you're moving too much metal quickly and you're gonna ruin the bevel. It's a good starting point for anybody. The 6000 is a really nice finishing stone. It's just enough where it's polishing the edge, but it's not too much where you're just shining the edge, not wasting any time with this stone. To start with basics, you wanna start with a double bevel knife. The stone goes like this, the knife about 45 degrees on the stone. If you're too vertical on the stone, you're not gonna get a good sharpen along the plane. You're gonna roll your edge as you move the knife. If you're too horizontal on the stone, you're only gonna be sharpening the knife in patches and it's gonna wear unevenly. You won't have a straight cutting edge. So 45 degrees on the stone is the best place to start. Then you wanna come up off of the stone 15 degrees for Japanese knives. There's some exceptions to this. If you're doing a lot of vegetable chopping, you want a bit more of a wide angle so you have more strength across the edge. If you're doing more fish slicing, you want a kind of a little bit thinner of an edge so you can have a nice clean slice. But for an all-purpose knife, 15 degrees is the perfect angle. For these stones, like I said, these are splash and go stones. So we just splash some water on the surface, give it a good rub, and now we're ready to sharpen our knife. 45, 15 degrees up. My right hand is going to make a triangle onto the knife. My finger goes on the spine, palm of my hand goes on the handle, my thumb goes right here on the edge of the blade. With this triangle locked in like this, I have very good control over the knife. So I can hold my angle, I'm not gonna wiggle too much. Something to be wary of, when you're doing your passes or your strokes, at the end, and when you start going a different direction, you're actually using a different muscle group. So when you push and then start to pull, people have a tendency to wiggle the knife. Be mindful of this. When you come to the end of a stroke, be gentle, pull the knife back. Now with our hand like this, our left hand is gonna take two fingers and put it on the edge of the blade. You don't wanna be on the stone, you don't wanna be right on that cutting edge, you wanna be just on that stone. And this is where our first check will come into play. If your knife is too low, you'll actually feel the edge of the knife with this hand. That means you're gonna be rubbing the flat of the knife and you're not actually sharpening. If the edge is too high, it'll feel like your fingers go down the knife and then across the stone. That means your angle's too high. When you hit that perfect 15, it should be a nice smooth transition between your fingers, the knife, and the stone. So we push to the end of the stone and then back. We push and we're back. So that was two strokes. For every time we go like this, we use about maybe 20% pressure on the push and then 0% pressure on the pull. You don't wanna be pushing down on this knife. You push too hard, yeah, you create that burr nicely, but you're gonna damage the edge. You might wear this part faster than you wear the next part. So be gentle, take your time. So we start here. We do a nice pass, 
a nice stroke, maybe five, six times. Then we move our fingers down. Not too far, don't be jumping three times. Move your fingers so that your first finger closest to your thumb kind of takes the place of where your second finger was. You step your fingers down. Do the nice strokes again. Maybe five, six passes, applying more pressure on the edge trailing stroke and less pressure on the pull stroke, right? Edge trailing, a little bit of pressure. Edge leading, no pressure. After five or six passes, we move our fingers down again. And we will complete this all the way to the end of the knife. If you noticed, as we get to the edge of this knife, the tip, the knife curves a little bit. So every time we move our fingers, make sure that we're still at that 45 degrees on the stone. And keep going with these passes. Move your fingers down, adjust your angle. Nice, even strokes. All the way to the very tip of the knife. Just like that. Now how do we know that we're getting somewhere? We take the pulp of our thumb and we run it across the edge this way. If you're doing a good job, you'll slowly start to feel a burr developing along the edge of the knife. If you feel the burr all the way along the knife, we can move on to the next step. If you don't feel the burr, maybe it's yes, yes, yes. Oh, missed a spot. Yes, yes, yes. Don't hit just that one spot. Start again. Do a full pass of the knife. You don't have to do a lot of strokes. Maybe only do two or three strokes for every section, but don't do just one spot. If you do only one spot, you're gonna wear that part of the knife unevenly from the rest of the blade. So do that whole pass again. Then check for a burr. Oh, I missed a little bit in the tip. So another thing to be mindful of, check to make sure your stone is always wet. The wet stone should be wet, right? Just a couple more strokes, final pass. Pay special attention to that tip, because I missed it last time. And check for a burr, nice, perfect. Got a really good burr all the way down the edge. Now we flip the knife over to do the other side of this knife. Two techniques here, some people, like to switch hands. For me, now I'm not so strong with my left hand. I don't have enough control. So what I'll do is I'll turn my hips when I flip this knife over, maybe even turn the stone a little bit, just to make sure I still hit that 45 degree angle, but it needs to feel controlled. My right hand, instead of making the triangle on the back, flip the knife over, now my fingers are like this. I still have that triangle. I still have a really good edge control. So when I lock in my angle, it's nice and stable. These fingers go on the edge of the blade like this. We do the same thing going the other direction. So on the edge trailing stroke, maybe 10, 20% pressure. On the edge leading stroke, zero pressure. You're just keeping your fingers on the blade to keep it stable from rocking. All right? We do five or six strokes, move our fingers down. Five or six strokes. Move our fingers down. Now, just by the sound, I can tell that my stone's too dry. So I'll add some more water. Make sure you're always at that 45 degrees. Now we feel the first side where we had a burr. Now there's no burr. On the other side, that it was now the upside, just starting to develop a burr on this side. Maybe not enough on the heel. So reapply some water. Do another full pass. Don't neglect any part of the knife just to save some time. Spend your time. Take your time. The more time you spend, the better of an edge you're gonna have. All the way to the tip, look at that. No burr on this side, nice. Nice little burr all the way down that knife. So on the rough stone, we've created a very strong burr on one side, and then we pushed it back to the other side. If we can look at the edge, it should be nice and straight and even. You don't want any wiggles and wobbles as you go through the edge of the knife. This side looks pretty good to my eyes. You can see the burr formed, it's looking nice. The other side, there's no burr, nice and smooth all the way down. No chips, no chunks missing, pretty good. Well, we've taken our dull knife and we've pushed it back to a nice straight edge. We've created that burr, we pushed the burr to the other side. Now, we can flip the stone over. Add some water, make sure it's nice and smooth, nice and wet. And we go back to the first side. At this point, the burr should be on the bottom of the knife. Create that triangle again with our hand, fingers on the edge, 
45 degrees on the stone, 15 degrees off. Nice triangle, good strength, good stability, fingers on the blade, here we go. Now with the polishing stone, you're using even less pressure than you did on the first side. We really don't need to change the shape of the knife at all, we're just polishing that cutting edge all the way down to the tip. The rough stone reshapes the edge. If you looked at the side of it, it'd be very jagged and rough. So the polishing stone kind of polishes that so it's nice and smooth. So if you're cutting some paper after the rough stone, you'd feel the da -da 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 the jaggations of the edge, new word. After the finishing stone, it should be a nice clean slice. Okay, so I just did this side. Don't have a burr yet, but that's okay. Just do a couple more passes here. Nice and gentle, not much pressure, keeping the stone nice and wet, focusing at the end of the stroke. We don't wobble the knife. We keep that 15 degree angle all the way to the end. Put some water on the stone again, flip the knife over. I turn my hip, maybe turn the stone a little bit, find that comfortable spot. I go again on this side. When you're doing your strokes, you wanna make sure that you're using the full length of the stone as well. If you're only doing these little kind of half strokes down here, trying to work a specific spot, you're actually gonna work the stone and warp it. And after a while, you, you won't be able to sharpen a knife on. You'll actually have to plane the stone down again. And fix your stone before you can fix any more knives. Well, we're almost there. There's maybe one more trick we can do to get this even finer of an edge. With a knife, you can use a piece of paper, you can use your leather belt, or buy a proper leather strop like a barber uses. But now what we're gonna do just work the knife back and forth across the piece of paper like this. This is called stropping. If there's a little bit of a micro burr left along the edge or any kind of small little hills and valleys along the cutting edge, this is gonna help polish that last little bit out and remove that last little micro burr off the edge of the knife. Good and sharp. Another way to tell if your knife is really sharp is to cut a piece of paper. You should be able to get razor, feather the cut, really sharp. If you can curve the cut, it's very sharp. Next one we should talk about, single bevel knives. There's two different types. There's a fish knife, which you want a true single bevel edge on this knife. You don't wanna have a secondary bevel on the one flat side, right? The other type is more for vegetable knives. These are single bevel, so really good for peeling tasks, but if you only have one edge on these, the actual edge itself can become very thin and brittle. So you're chopping through some carrots or something, you're gonna chip the blade. So with this kind of a knife, we actually put a secondary bevel on the single bevel side. The back is still nice and flat, but on the bevel side, there's actually a secondary edge. For these, it's not super difficult. It's very similar to the double bevel knife. From this line here is the shinogi, this is your edge. So we lay the knife flat between the shinogi and the cutting edge, 45 degrees on the stone. When you lay it flat on the shinogi line, then we bring it up again, 15 degrees. This will create our secondary bevel. And for this, it's nice and straight, so I'm not gonna be turning the knife at all as I go from one end to the other. Water on the stone, nice and gentle. Just a couple of strokes here, all the way to the end. If the knife was very dull, you would start on the lower grit stone, work your way back up. This knife was already pretty sharp as it comes. To fix the burr on a single bevel knife, the back of the knife is almost flat. The middle is actually concave just a little bit, but on the spine and the actual cutting edge, there are two flat spots. So we lay that flat on the stone. Then you want to pull the knife away from the edge towards you. Take it off, put it back to the top, and pull the knife. Move down a little bit, pull the knife. And we're only pulling the knife in one direction because we don't want to push the burr back to the angled side. We want to create that burr a little bit and then pull it straight. So you keep that nice flat back side so we can keep those nice little peels going. But if we were to push or lift up, we'd actually create that double bevel. We don't want that, this is a single bevel knife. So 45 on the stone, 15 degrees up. A couple of strokes all the way through to a pass, lay it flat, pull towards you. You're just pulling that burr back to straight. And then 
You have a very sharp knife again. Single bevel, same with a double bevel. You can strop the knife. This is a sushi knife. This is the Yanagiba. So we're gonna sharpen the shinogi line to the cutting edge of this knife. Make sure there's nice lots of water on our stone. You don't wanna create a secondary bevel for this. We want a very narrow cutting edge because you need clean slices for fish. Flat on the shinogi line. 45 degrees on the stone. Triangle with the right hand, left hand on the blade. Nice and gentle. Move our fingers down. All the way to the end. There is a situation where you do want to go back and forth, and that's if your knife edge is actually very dull. Like if you ran it across the stone this way a few times and you had like a square edge, you're gonna have to actually sharpen the back side of the knife as well as the bevel side. And that's just to thin the blade out until you come back to a nice bevel, okay? At that point, you would repeat the same process I'm doing now. Just the shinogi line and then pulling the flat back towards yourself. That's looking really good now. We got the nice cut, beautiful. So double bevel knives, we create a burr on one side, we push it to the other, and we go little by little by little back to the very tip. Start with a rough stone, go to a finishing stone, and then we strop. Single bevels for vegetables, you wanna create a secondary bevel closer to the tip to make it stronger for chopping through things, right? Again, 45 on the stone, 15 degrees up. For single bevel sushi knives, you wanna lay it flat on that shinogi line polish it out and then just drag that flat side back. And that's pretty much it for sharpening. Now with carbon steel knives, after you sharpen, you should of course oil the blade as fast as we can. Should have a nice sharp knife and it'll last you a long time. Arigato.